here and now, here we are, on the verge of great events that we don't know what is going to happen. We can only think that there is a necessary rendering that has to be inflicted upon the Zionist state to stop the genocide in Gaza. That's where I think the focus should be. Whereas what's happening is the United States is and Israel, Israel is uh, focusing on Iran. They want a war with Iran. They want to take on Iran. Iran, I think, is number seven on the list of seven that the United States set up a long time ago to eliminate as a regime, regime change operations that included uh, Libya and Gaddafi. And now Iran stands, and Iran will not fall. No, what? So let's go back to how this uh, turned about, the events. Um, the Zionist state um, created uh, a false flag operation in the, in the occupied Golan Heights, which they sent their own missile, killing 12 uh, Arab children who were under the Israeli occupation, where they went out and said, uh, it's Hezbollah who killed those children with no investigation, no international investigation. It is an occupied territory after all. And in the entire West, like a dog, uh, hound dogs, the chorus, they start barking that, yeah, it's Hezbollah with that. So that gives the Zionists the right to go and, and attack Lebanon. The Americans played a big role in this uh, false operation when Amos Hochstein, who is the Middle East U.S. representative for negotiation with Lebanon, he assured the, the Lebanese government that uh, Beirut and Al Dahia, which is the southern suburb of Beirut, will not be attacked by the Israelis. They will only attack other other assets in Lebanon for Hezbollah. It turns out that is not true. They attacked Beirut which is the Dahia, and they murdered eight civilians, uh, about 100 more injured, many of them in serious conditions, in order to avenge the death of uh, the, those 12 children they killed themselves. Another thing, uh, they went out of their way and they murdered Ismail Haniyeh, is one of the best, best leaders of the Palestinian people. He's actually the leader of the Palestinian people. He is an ex-prime minister of the Palestinian people, and he is number one negotiating partner uh, indirectly with the Zionists for a ceasefire. This guy, uh, Hania, had uh, a protection uh, net, safety net, given to him via the Qataris by United States that he will not be you know, uh, killed or being attacked by anybody because he is, uh, after all, he is the Palestinian negotiator. In both cases, the American played, uh, you know, uh, a false flag lying. Uh, the Zionists uh, attacked and killed uh, Hania. Uh, they killed in, in Beirut. And uh, now it's, um, they ask, they, they're looking for a major war, war against uh, the resistance uh, uh, camp or, uh, you know, and uh, they will have it. They will have a, a big war. The, the Iran and Hezbollah will retaliate, and this time massively on the Zionists. Who's to blame? It's, of course, the Zionists and their mother surrogate, the United States. And yep. this is uh, turning into a, a world revolt. And the counter-revolutionary forces perceive it as a world revolt, even revolution. And they are retaliating. In England, there is uh, spreading racist riots, attacking individuals mm -hmm. who are of minority nationalities like it's an insanity that is, you know, spread like a disease, you know, mental disease that has become endemic to the British society. And I can see that reflected in the United States. It could happen as well. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, 
directed presently at the Palestinian solidarity demonstrators who are being attacked by counter-revolutionary Zionists together mm -hmm. with their allies, yep. which hasn't been declared. You know, that, you know, those who have attacked, you know, the encampments have not been prosecuted, have not been arrested. No. Been no, arrested. No, like no, the police no. are protecting the racist, uh, you know, in England. You know, I saw one video of a black guy who was defending himself and police, you know, like came in and sort of, you know, tried to talk down, you know, the racists. You know, they didn't even use any force, you know, no sticks, no gas, no nothing, nothing at all. And then this one racist, you know, tries to escape. And the black guy goes after him, tackles him, take him, takes him down. And the police go and they tackle the black guy. And they let the white guy escape. And the black guy is now all of a sudden he's arrested, you know, instead. So, you know, that's what yeah. I saw. That's what's happening. You know, it's very clear what's going on. It's incredible. Yeah. You know, it's the subconscious racist elements that have taken uh, control. I found the video troubling of the, of the, um, I would say a few hundred people attacking a Holiday Inn, which is supposedly a migrant hotel now. And what I found so shocking was men having their little children, you know, walking around, having a nice Sunday, ladies, ladies with their purses just kind of strolling along while basically the hooligans set a fire trying to burn the hotel down. Mm. Wow. Well, yeah, I mean, I, saw, I, I, I spent the last hour on Telegram, you know, just going through these videos and that's, uh, and, and also looking at the comments from some people, comments, blaming the migrants for the problems of, of, of the UK. Supposedly, this all was close triggered by a tragic death of someone in England who they said the perpetrator, the the accused person is, is a migrant, supposedly, not sure. This also happened in Ireland, I think, a couple of years ago. Something similar happened. Um, so it is it, to me, it just indicates the need for those who are not racists and those who are not chauvinists to stand up and show and form form solidarity, just as in the situation in the UK and in, in, in um, Palestine, had a little disagreement with a so-called activist yesterday. So I don't, I don't support this. I don't support that. I said, it's not your issue to support something or not. The Palestinian people are fighting. And our duty is to oppose the U.S. role in the aggression against Palestine and to show solidarity, especially since many of the Palestinian organization you know, went to China a few weeks ago and essentially formed an alliance to fight back and we have, we have to support that alliance. There's no reason, there's absolutely no reason we cannot have 100% solidarity, especially when they're murdering people, whether it was a missile or a bomb, it's like the murder of Fred Hampton. Somebody's asleep. Let's just assassinate the person in their sleep. It's a very sick and demented type of warfare. Now, I read it, I saw last night that the Telegraph of London has spread this, this lie story about the IGRC is responsible for this murder, blah, 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 blah. Clear, clear disinformation from Mossad and the CIA types. They're also trying to say the U.S. had nothing to do with it. Uh, that Net Netanyahu didn't tell Biden when he came to visit him two weeks ago. Remember, the murder happened after Netanyahu left the United States. Mm -hmm. Now, I would think that he gave him the approval, but maybe he did, you know, and they're probably really mad with each other now, but because you didn't tell us that you're going to do this, just like they didn't tell, the, the Israelis didn't tell the U.S. they were going to bomb the consulate in Beirut when they killed members of the I, 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 IGRC a few months ago. But irrespective of that, the U.S. still says we'll, we, we, we'll back you in war and we'll send carriers and Marines. So it seems to me they have to support what Israel, they support Israel, what Israel does, even though they say that they, 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 they do nothing about it. 
And, that, and that's, that's a two, the two faces of the United States. We know nothing about it, but we, but we still support you. So, you know, I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to say, I, you know, I'm, I appreciate I appreciate the analysis that, that, that everyone's bringing to, to the table. Thank you. Yeah, I believe, I believe um, you know, uh, whether the Zionists had consulted the American authorities, whether they did or not, that's a side show, right? Right. In my opinion, <laughs> it's meaningless. It's it's yeah. a, it's a distraction uh, narrative by the U.S. Uh, right. To look, they are uh, you know they they have a distance between them Zionists, therefore, and they have to be always a firefight fire firefighters to to put down the the tension in the Middle East. That's that's baloney. Okay. Right. The, the the United States. The, I mean, sir, the Zionists. They have, they have to consult and take the approval of any major operation outside of Palestine. M- naming the the killing number two man in, in Hezbollah in Beirut, right. or killing uh, murder uh, Ismail Haniya in Tehran. Right. So this is this is a major escalation. Yes. It's not it's not a small game. Yes, uh, Netanyahu doesn't have to get uh, an approval to murder Palestinians in Palestine, whether target killing or mass killing. That's that's a given. But when it coming into uh, an international uh, play, they have to get the approval and backing by the American uh, authorities and to to that the the NATO because this is good. Uh, escalate into a, a regional fight, actually to a World War Three fight. So I agree. I agree. Netanyahu doesn't have that, uh, you know, that uh, privilege to start it. Okay, knowing that he his intelligence services, the Mossad, the Shabak, and Amman are interconnected uh, systematically. With the MI6 and the CIA, so any side story of he told them, they told him no, no, that's that's side side distraction story. So basically, what what why the Americans and the Zionists had to go and assassinate number one Hamas and number two in Hezbollah is to attract to try to get the the Zionist and the Americans behind them, their deterrence, which been uh, uh, reduced to zero by October 7th, I buy, and by the war of attrition by Hezbollah in the north, and their stagnation and loss, loss in Gaza. So they need to restore their, uh, their uh, deterrence in the Middle East. And even if that means a major war. So uh, they thought that if by doing that, Playing on the brinks of of the cliff, as they say, uh, they might they might get uh, a silence from the other side. Hezbollah and Iran, to to them behind them, the axis of resistance said, "Okay, we'll take you on this game. We will retaliate, and this time going to be a massive retaliation on the Zion state. And if that means a regional war, let it be." We will not let you pass this time. That's my assessment. Yes. The, the opposition, I think, is gathering esteem as well. In England, where the racist riots are taking place, the anti-racists, as reported by Al Jazeera, outnumber the racists already. They're just uh, not organized. You know, it's time to get organized. We have to look at the, the racist movement, the fascist racist movement in the United States and in, in, in the entire West, including, of course, uh, Britain. It's, it's an integral part of the, uh, the Western Zionist Alliance to uh, dehumanize all those anti-Zionists by, so you have an alliance of Nazis, KK Klan, and all those uh, ultra-right, uh, alt-right, etc., you know, whatever you name it. They are working to dehumanize the people who are in solidarity with Palestinian people. 
By dehumanizing them, they are justifying the murder and the killing of the Palestinian people in Gaza because they are connecting them as one one uh, group. So being for Palestine, you dehumanize them. It's okay to dehumanize the, the murder of the Palestinians and making the murder of over 50,000 Palestinians justified. Mm -hmm. The resistance is ready in Lebanon, from what I've heard, mainly from Al Jazeera, which isn't always accurate. There are 150,000 Hezbollah fighters ready. Uh, there is 100,000 Zionist military uh, that is being ready for the border as well. So this could be the uh, confrontation. But in any case, it has reduced the military potential of the Zionist forces in Gaza. But that yeah. doesn't make much of a difference, you know, to the population because they're facing famine and disease now. So, they, you know, and then all the crossing points are still closed, you know, so it doesn't matter if they don't do anything militarily. They've, you know, set the course, you know, for mass murder. So, uh, but the fight against uh, Hamas has not succeeded and they've had to tone down their efforts because they can't get away with what they thought they were going to get away with. That's what I yeah, see, maybe. you know, as being set up right now. As far maybe. as Iran is concerned, I think Iran is going to rely upon what it did before. It's going to be, but much more intense. And I think that what they did before, you know, was strategically correct because they were uh, focusing, targeting, you know, military bases. You know, where the uh, um, Israel Air Force is located, where it takes off from, you know, to go and bomb into Gaza, you know, that should be taken down. And they can be take it down, so they should take it down. That's what I see. Um, as uh, whatever the report in the media about the strength of Hezbollah, it's all speculation. Whether they have a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand, fifty thousand, one million, it's just only uh, sheer uh, speculation. And how much they have of, of weaponry. Uh, the advanced weaponry and how many rockets they have, missiles, it's all speculation, all based on the Zionist estimates, which is, of course, uh, nobody trusts the Zionists. So uh, I'm not going to go about uh, how many soldiers does Hezbollah has versus what the Zionists has, because this war is a war of, of technology, uh, cyber technology, uh, advanced uh, jamming. Uh, so the number of soldiers who are part of this war is is not a, the vital one. It is important, but it's not a vital. It's the it's the technology, what you have, and what the other has. So um, when it comes to numbers, I've heard. I don't know. I can't say it for sure. That in in Syria there's over three hundred to four hundred thousand uh, troops that are from Iraq, from Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, Syrians, Palestinians, even Yemenis are ready for war. But that's just sheer speculation. I cannot mm -hmm. confirm or not. So uh, when it comes to the numbers, the Zionists they are in disadvantage. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Them and their uh, supporters, uh, the American supporters. I had a thought in terms of what's the crucial sort of matter here, which is the siege of um, Gaza. Mm -hmm. And it seems that, you know, if there's no, uh, you know, forces or P UN peacekeeping forces or whatever forces, you know, that are willing mm -hmm. to go in there, you know, and open up the borders, the alternative is by sea. And that is, you know, Turkey. Turkey has a Navy and a strong Navy. I don't know how strong, but they could open up, you know, the sea to aid to come into Gaza and everything, you know, uh, to come into Gaza that's necessary for Gaza, even you know peacekeeping troops. Yeah, Turkey. That's Turkey will only... not do anything. Turkey that's will right. not do anything. Yeah, Turkey just own talks. It's been ten months, and Erdogan, what he's saying, just only uh, giving the Palestinian lip lip service about yeah. you know this and that uh, about. 80, 70 to 80 percent of the Israeli oil comes through uh, port of Jihan in Turkey. So uh, this is oil coming from Azerbaijan. Nobody knows about this. Uh -huh. So if he is really serious, 
if he's really serious, we don't want him to intervene militarily. Okay. If he's just all he could say that no more oil. That's uh, as simple as that. No more gas, no hmm. more uh, fruits and vegetables and uh, poultry and uh, beef from Turkey. No more uh, other uh, commodities going from the uh, Turkish ports <coughs> to to the Zionist states. So uh, no, the, Turkey is is as bad as Al Sisi, Egypt Sisi. Uh, CC, he he does sometimes some lip service. The Turkish are more superior than him in lip service. But if they want to do something, they could do a lot for the Palestinians. But they're not going to do anything. Because, first of all, they're part of NATO. Number two, all, all their financial and economical relation is with the West. And uh, they still rely heavily on the West, the United States and, and, and Europe. So basically, uh, he just uh, Erdogan and his uh, ministers, he just uh, do a narrative, uh, you know, revolutionary narrative for uh, internal and external uh, consumption. Other than that, no, nothing happened. Hmm. What about Egypt? Isn't Same there no. no revolution happening in Egypt? No, nothing, nothing so far because it's a it's a it's a fascist police police state that's been in uh, in place in Egypt. But who knows? There's 110 million Egyptians. There are uh, most of them under the severe uh, pressure of hunger. Actually, there's some kind of a hunger in, in Egypt. So eventually, probably, this will explode in his face. But yeah. un until now, until now, nothing has happened in Egypt. But Jordan, Jordan should be I know it's the same situation as Egypt, you know, it's a yep. dictatorial regime. Yeah, yeah, dictatorial fascist police state uh, in Jordan. But who knows, you know, like uh, nobody knew that at one point the streets in Egypt will explode in the face of Mubarak. Mm. So it might happen again. We don't know. We'll see. Mm. Yeah. But I'm not I'm not betting anything on that. Yeah, I think it depends upon what is ha going to happen in terms of the uh, the uh, um, response to the Zionist provocations. This point, right now, if it's successful, then it will provoke uh, revolutions in those regimes that were most closely associated with the Zionist regime. You mean which if the response? Zionist mean, regime you is, mean response is, in 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 restoration with Iran and Hezbollah? If this or, is a successful response from Iran yeah. and Hezbollah, oh, yeah. and if the uh, Zionist regime is uh, impaired or forced to retreat in some significant way, this will give the impetus to revolutions against the regimes that were associated with that regime. Definitely. In the first place. Definitely. Yeah. Actually, the first regime will fall, in my opinion. Mm. It's the, the most vulnerable one. Although it looks very strong, but it's still under belly, it's very vulnerable. It's Jordan. Mm -hmm. If the Zion is being forced to retreat, mm -hmm. I mean, like, take a big hit and will not respond, mm -hmm. Egypt will be, I mean, sorry, Egypt, uh, Jordan will be next because mm -hmm. that will embolden, that will embolden the revolutionaries in Iraq and Syria and Lebanon to mm -hmm. move on to Jordan and mm -hmm. take down the regime. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be ugly for a while. Then yeah. it will be. Uh, I do believe uh, that it, it w the revolution is will triumph in 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 uh, in the Levant, yes. in the Arab. I yes. don't I don't like using the Middle East. The Middle East is is a is no. a colonial colonial word. Wor yeah, yeah, it's uh, a Eurocentric. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, for certain, you know, because there's two million Palestinian refugees living in Jordan. The, in yeah. Jordan, they have been treated, you know, better than they have than in Lebanon. But nonetheless, you know, they're not uh, half, granted half freedom to even travel around. Half of the this is uh, this is what it is. Half of the population in in Egypt, I'm sorry, in Jordan, are Palestinians. Yeah. Even the so-called Jordanians themselves. 
they they have uh, tribal and family ties with the Palestinians. So it's like you could say the entire population of of, of uh, Jordan are Palestinian. So uh, the, the the monarch knows very well, and and uh, the regime knows very well mm-hmm. that if things goes bad for the Zionist, he is next, mm-hmm. unless he change. But he can't change because. You know, there's 16 right. American base, American and British bases in Jordan. 16 Whoa. of them. <laughs> of course. It's vital. It's the longest, it's the longest, Jordan has the longest border with Palestine, over uh, almost about 500 kilometers long. And mm-hmm. it's very, very rugged terrain. Mm-hmm. So uh, the Jordanian army has been, has been guard. For the Zionists since mm-hmm. since 1971, so it's mm-hmm. been 53 years that that uh, front is being quiet. Anyway, that's uh, that's 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 the picture. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Okay. Yes. So uh, I think I think this is my my assessment to what's going to happen. Uh, Hezbollah and Iran. Well, and the Houthis too. They still have bone to pick with the Zionists after the, the Zionists attacked Al Hudaydah's uh, fort, yes. killing about 10 people and injuring over 100, all yes. civilians. Yes. So, uh, whether the, the, the attack will be coordinated or individually, that's their, them to decide. Yes. It will be a massive uh, attack. To re- re- uh, regain the uh, uh, axis of resistance, deterrence against the Zionists and its supporters, mm-hmm. United States and the Arab uh, three uh, treasonous regimes. <clears throat> the USA so, sent its uh, its uh, aircraft carrier into the Mediterranean, right true, next to true. Lebanon. So, yeah. so basically, you know, basically, the Iranians and the Hezbollah and everybody says, if the Americans. Don't intervene into attacking, uh, attacking their the resistance in in uh, the resistance axis. Nothing will happen to them. But if they intervene uh, actively in attacking Iran or Hezbollah, the American all the American assets in the Middle East or sorry in the Levant hmm. will be under uh, attack. Oh yes. So it's oh, gonna yes. be a big war, I think. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. It's so major war. That's my the, assessment. And we will be triumph. Yes. Yes. And we have to become organized in the United Fronts to defend ourselves because the perception of our movement is now so strong that the counter revolutionary forces seem desperate and they seem that they have yeah. to get themselves out there to stop us from doing yes. what we're doing in all dimensions. And so we right. have to be able. We have to be in a measure to be able to defend ourselves, you know, with the United Front at all each of our uh, various actions, because we know that we cannot rely upon the police. So right. you know, you can't. So no, you can't. You know, this is uh, this is the time, you know, for uh, under necessity for people to become organized, you know, by necessity, and uh, and uh, I think that. Uh, we are in a position not like the 60s. I remember in the 60s, we were about 20% of the population. And then in the 80s, 90s, you know, turns around, you know, that we're about 50%, you know, uh, solidarity, you know, with the population. Now, Mm -hmm. I think that we are, especially in younger generations, I think that we are representing about 75% of the population. I think well, that uh, um, probably within the younger crowd, yeah, seventy yeah, percent. within the younger crowd, but not with the entire population. The entire population, no. in general, is still either anti anti uh, progress or they have no opinion. And but, very relevant, uh, yeah. you know, because they're not activists, you know. Like, yes, uh, but uh, I would know, say, yeah, I agree with you. Most young people in yeah. North America, actually, to the in the entire West, are for the Palestinian rights. They're against the, the colonial racist states, uh, state of uh, so-called Israel, yes. and against against the the 
the colonial uh, imperial power, uh, not just in the Middle East, like in Venezuela, for example, what they're yes. doing now in Venezuela. That's mm. another story, and another against kind Cuba, of revolutionary, uh, yeah. uh, their war, their war in 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 the Ukraine, and their war, their uh, mm. saber rattling in in the South China Sea, and mm. uh, in uh, certain Korea, they are uh, provoking North Korea like day and night. They, of course, they they make it look like it's North Korea who's provoking them. It's the other way around. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, if you look, all these areas are all interconnected. They have uh, one enemy. It's it's the Western imperialism. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, very clear, and uh, you don't need uh, 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 a political science professor to <laughs> to to dissect what mm -hmm. the American imperialism is doing around the world, mm -hmm. and of course mm -hmm. inside the United States. Mm -hmm. may, may I mention something that's occurring that's not been in the news? I think it's a very, it's a major story that we need to look at, and the reason why it's major is because it's showing exactly what you just mentioned about why the West is losing the support. There are men who have been in prison at Guantanamo Bay, mm -hmm. prisoners, supposedly who took part in. Um, the attack on the, on the World Trade Center, etc. Mm -hmm. they, they have officially been tortured. There's no doubt about it. It's official narrative, CIA torture. Mm -hmm. And they reached a plea deal this week. Mm -hmm. I mean, what kind of court is that? Can How could this even be considered any kind of trial? This is a, mm -hmm. I mean, what, what, what kind of trial could they even have? Mm -hmm. That they would plead guilty Mm -hmm. and not get a death penalty. Mm -hmm. This has outraged the U.S. administration. This has not been talked about in the press too much. Uh, Lloyd Austin, with I'm sure the approval of Biden, overturned overturned the conviction of the military court. Mm -hmm. Said, no, we, we, we will have no plea bargain. You must get the death penalty. Yeah. So it shows you right there when it comes to rights, they want blood. They want death. They want to send a message that we will kill whoever we want to kill, even when it comes to our, our military courts. Mm -hmm. But the main thing about this story is that the CIA torture is acknowledged, yet there is still a trial. Mm -hmm. There could be no trial. Any, any confessions, any court, and anywhere in the land, I don't care where it is, where acknowledged torture occurs, the trial is a farce. Mm. And that's one reason I think they lay, that they had to let our brother Julian Assange go because yeah. they had spied on him in the embassy in, in, in London. And mm. how can you obtain a trial when you're spying on the person you're supposed to be trying to be prior to the trial? So mm -hmm. I'm just saying to just let people know, this is another example of how the U.S. operates. When it has someone in prison and they they admit to torture, they still want to kill them. Mm -hmm. That's what these Zionists, you know, were trying to do, you know, and they invaded even the military court in the uh, West Bank and uh, tried to liberate the um, soldiers who are accused of um, torture and rape. <laughs> And, uh, which was, and, which and was the a, soldiers a token, didn't do anything. It was a token thing. I mean, like, there's already 40 Palestinians perished, they died under torture. And all they did is just, they accused those nine nine soldiers of sodomy. So, so I, I can't remember, say that word. Um, you know, by, by inserting a metal bar into the anal of one of the soldiers, Right, right, right. Uh, the uh, Palestinian who almost died, and they want to do a, a token show uh, to the world that they are uh, a law abiding uh, Western democracy. Even that was not allowed to take place. Uh, the yeah. Zionist fascists went to the hmm. to that uh, military base to release those soldiers, even members of parliament, even ministers within the government, Ben Gvir. Hmm. And Smotrich, mm -hmm. they went to to uh, 
to uh, release those. Finally, now I'll give you the verdict. Eight, eight of those are still under uh, investigation or interrogation. But of course, we know what kind of interrogation they will uh, receive. Okay, uh, five star uh, interrogation, and one soldier was let go home because there's no evidence against him. So wait another uh, maybe week, ten days. These guys will uh, be released because there's no evidence, and the death of forty Palestinian death uh, Palestinians uh, prisoners, it will be yeah. another. Um, you know, yeah. uh, abandoned uh, is issue. Yeah, even the uh, soldiers who were accused of the deaths of uh, the international volunteers, Rochelle Corey and Tom Hurdle, they were yes, acquitted right? as well. Of Same course. pattern. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 known. It like even Israelis themselves. I mean, uh, who uh, like uh, Gideon Levy and uh, Amir Haas uh, and other. Um, Let's say soft Zionist or non Zionist Israelis, they say that uh, nothing had happened since 1967 to any soldier or any uh, mm. uh, jail guard, despite uh, the fact there's hundreds of Palestinians died in jails. Mm. Okay, Many were tortured, and it, there's lots of hard evidence against those, but nothing happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, this has been very important, very significant encounter that we have here and the information yes. that we have to provide. And we ask our viewers to share, share, share everywhere. Yep. And uh, uh, there's so much more. And uh, we will be back uh, next uh, Sunday as well at noontime to broadcast to you, you know, what uh, is... Uh, actually happening and not what is being reported to be happening because we are in contact with the actuality we are the movement and we are here to stay very good stay strong stay active yes sir